Sir Keith Campbell began his career as an accountant and quickly gained a reputation for restoring ailing businesses. Over the next 35 years, he used those unique skills to recommend a blueprint for an efficient Australian financial system. Sir Keith Campbell was born in Sydney on March 4, 1928 and was educated at Homebush Junior High School before being awarded a scholarship to attend the Australian Accountancy College. I think that some of his entrepreneurial flair came from his mother. He knew that if he was going to get somewhere there was only one way that that was going to happen and that was through hard work. After working for Retty and Vickery, he joined accounting firm DM Dixon & Co, becoming a junior partner at age 24. He was the auditor for home building business Thomas Holmes, which was later acquired by LJ Hooker Investment Corporation Limited. When hookers teetered on the brink of bankruptcy following the 1960 credit squeeze, Sir Keith restructured the complex real estate and development business and was appointed its chief general manager in 1963 and chairman in 1974. During his time in charge of hookers, the company consisted of real estate, hotels, pastoral interests, retail and industrial developments and jewellery businesses. He had uh, amazing um, contacts with um, US banks and the banks actually lent money to Hooker on the basis that, um, that Sir Keith Campbell was, would always remain as the CEO. I think he inspired people with confidence but there, was, there were things behind that confidence because it's one thing to appear confident and another thing to actually you know, have, have some substance behind that. However, Sir Keith's most lasting contribution came when he was appointed in 1979 to chair a committee of inquiry into the Australian financial system. I selected him for that leadership of the financial inquiry because on the Economic Advisory Committee, which I attended as a junior minister in the Fraser government, he always impressed me as having a combination of a deep understanding of the financial system but also he brought a very practical approach to the interrelationship of finance, property ownership and everyday life. What the media termed the Campbell Inquiry soon became a catchphrase for economic reform. The lengthy submissions process provoked substantial debate about the antiquated Australian financial system and the deregulatory recommendations contained in its 838-page report became a touchstone for politicians and regulators. These included removal of direct interest rate and exchange controls, floating of the dollar, granting of licenses to foreign banks, and removal of lending and deposit-taking restrictions. I remember when the work of the Campbell Inquiry was completed, I had a dinner in uh, the city thanking him and the other members of the committee and they had done a wonderful job and I can't stress too much what an enormous impact his recommendations had on the shape of the Australian financial system. Things we now take for granted uh, come directly from his recommendations. The Institute of Chartered Accountants in Australia, of which Sir Keith became a fellow in 1955, awarded him the inaugural Chartered Accountant of the Year in 1983. He was appointed CBE in 1972 and knighted in 1982. We both spoke at the National Economic Summit shortly before he died. So we were among the so-called business leaders invited to that summit. We were knighted on the same day in Canberra by the then Governor General Sir Ninian Stephen. He had a very high reputation. He was a, a towering figure in business. Sir Keith Campbell had been appointed to numerous educational, charitable and government bodies. He was also chairman of the Council of the Science Foundation for Physics at the University of Sydney, chairman of the Eastern Suburbs Railway Board of Review and a member of the Committee of Inquiry into the Cost of Housing in New South Wales. He supported the Salvation Army and was a foundation director and chairman of the board of the Shepherd Centre for Deaf Children. He uh, had an involvement through his Hooker connection with uh, Bruce Shepherd, uh, who married Annette Hooker, and they had two deaf children. And Bruce and my father became good friends. It was a natural thing for my father to then, 
help Bruce in any way he could when they wanted to establish the Shepherd Centre. In April 1983, Sir Keith participated in Prime Minister Hawke's National Economic Summit, urging that unemployment and inflation must be addressed simultaneously. Sadly, his heavy workload took a toll on his health, and Sir Keith died of heart disease on the 16th of April 1983 at Concord. It was said in the Sydney Morning Herald at the time of his passing, Sir Keith Campbell was the epitome of the old adage, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy man. Few have left such a profound impression on the business landscape. Ladies and gentlemen, please join the Property Council of Australia in honouring Sir Keith Campbell, 2016 inductee to the Australian Property Hall of Fame. I would like to share a congratulations uh, with his family because Keith was a giant, in my opinion, among businessmen. He was admired by many, and in fact, I would say he was admired by all in the business community. To the Campbell family, uh, you can feel very proud. Um, you can feel very honoured. Uh, he was a wonderful man, and I think tonight, uh, the fact that this has been recognised as a uh, a wonderful, wonderful thing. All of Dad's family and friends, uh, congratulations uh, on Dad's induction into the Hall of Fame. Well, congratulations to the family of the late Keith Campbell. Uh, I don't think the report of any man or woman in Australian political history was so widely implemented and has had such a transforming effect on the subject matter of that report as the Campbell inquiry into the Australian financial system.